Welcome to Ground Control. Uh, in the Pilots Lounge episode, prior to the last one that was released, I spoke about a lot of really cool components that I received to test and review. And so I finally had time to set aside and work with one of those last night. So this is the brush to brushless conversion module. It's designed specifically for these receiver gyro bricks that use the V761 protocol. Uh, this one is out of my Bolantec Sport Cup 500, but I think the vast majority of the Ishin Mini Warbirds, the 400 millimeter Warbirds, use this exact same brick. Uh, what I have here is the P47 Mustang, and, and I've spoken in the past about my desire to do a brushless conversion of this plane. Now, this Mini P47 does not use this board, it uses a different board. So I am going to be pulling the board out of this, this plane and installing this board in it. And if you, if you guys have watched any of the flight videos of the Volantec Sport Cup 500 or the Mini Mustang or the Mini F4U Corsair, the micro planes that I have reviewed, you know that the gyros in these are rock solid. It has fully stabilized mode, it has intermediate mode, and it has a complete manual mode which I absolutely love. If you choose to buy this module, and it's very small, very compact, very lightweight, um, you have to do some soldering to it. But um, the instructions that you'll receive, the diagrams, the images, make it really easy to set up and attach to this receiver. And then you just, you know, what I did was since I'm not going to be using this brick to support a brushed motor going forward, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to use these bricks for brushed motors. I had wanted to do uh, uh, the conversion on this, but I wanted to wait until I had time to work with this module. So I hardwired the module to the receiver gyro brick because that's all I'm going to use it for, is for brushless motors. And then for the wires that attach to the ESC, I just crimped servo pins on it and, and I've got it attached to the ESC that way so that if I ever decide to put a different ESC in it, it's just plug and play. Same thing with the motor. I've got a little Racer Star 1306 3100 kV motor. I'm going to be putting a Gem Fan 5x3 ABS prop on it on uh, my bench testing of this motor with that prop on a 2S LiPo. I was getting, I think it was around 200 grams of thrust, only 0.5.4 amps. So I could get away with a 6 amp ESC. I've got a 12 amp ESC connected to it right now because I couldn't find my 6 amp ESC. But I am going to be switching this out with a 6 amp ESC because it's smaller and lighter weight. Um, so I don't, know, I don't know much of anything about electronic um, boards, you know, and all the components on the electronic boards. But with the instructions and the diagram and the images that he provided for setting this module up, it was, it was pretty straightforward. Now, there, were, there was one spot on the board where it's, the pad is pretty small and uh, my soldering skills are not that great, but I was able to, to get everything soldered up and working on the first go. Uh, so if I could do it, it it's going to be pretty easy for the vast majority of people that, that have any experience, you know, soldering uh, wires up. So I was very enthusiastic last night when I, I, took my, I took my P47, I duplicated the file in my OpenTX transmitter, just changed the protocol from the protocol I'm using with the stock gyro uh, receiver brick to the V761 bound up to it, plugged a lipo into it, and the motor spun right up, the brushless motor spun right up. It's going to be absolutely easy for brushless conversions going forward uh, because, I mean, you can, you can buy these bricks fairly inexpensively. They come with, they come with their four, four channel, so you've got, you've got your, I think it's your elevator and your rudder 
servos on the bore. You have an additional socket for uh, aileron servo. So it's a full four channel. It's got an excellent uh, receiver, uh, a gyro uh, in, built into the brick, and, uh, and the protocol is well supported in OpenTX. So for doing brushless conversion projects going forward, this is going to make it a lot easier. And uh, I'm not going to have to buy a separate low voltage micro receiver to be able to do that because this steps down the voltage from 2S. You can set this up, you can wire this module up for either a 1S brushless power system or a 2S brushless power system. Now, I've done a couple of 1S brushless power system conversions in the past and I've never been completely happy with either the amount of power or the amount of flight time that I got from a 1S brushless system. So I'm only going to be using these for 2S brushless conversions going forward. I'm not interested in doing any more 1S conversions. So the kind of aircraft that I'm going to be looking for going forward for doing these conversions is going to be aircraft with a minimum 500 millimeter wingspan so that they're perfectly capable of carrying the extra weight. Now, uh, going from a 1S LiPo to a 2S LiPo, obviously the LiPo is going to add a little bit of weight. The stock system runs off of a 1S 500 milliamp hour LiPo. Let me see, that LiPo weighed 12.9 grams. What I'm planning on using is this little Nanotech. It's a 2S 35C LiPo, 300 milliamp, and it weighs 17.1 grams. So it's 4.2 grams heavier than the 500 milliamp hour 1S LiPo that, that you fly stock with this, but I had to glue in two pennies in the front, one penny underneath the nose at seven and a half grams of nose ballast weight that I had to add to this plane because it was tail heavy to get it flying really, really well. And that did, that got this, this airframe flying extremely well. But with this uh, 2S LiPo, the ESC and the brushless motor I'm going to be putting in it, I'm going to position everything so that I do not have to have any ballast weight on the nose. So that's going to reduce this airframe by seven and a half grams, okay, to start with. So I'm sure that when I get the brushless conversion completed, it's going to be a little bit heavier than it was with the stock configuration, but it's not going to be a whole lot heavier. So um, reducing that by uh, 7.5 grams of nose weight, but with the ballast weight that I have on it, I always like to take the aircraft with the stock lipo, put it on the scales and weigh it and find out what, what the all up weight is in its stock configuration and then weigh it again once I get the conversion done to brushless to see how much additional weight I added to it. So the all-up weight of this plane with the 1S 500 milliamp hour LiPo with the 7.5 grams of ballast weight that I had to put on the nose because that's the way I was flying it is 100.5 grams. I'd almost bet that I'm only going to be somewhere between 12 to 15 grams heavier after the brushless conversion than it is right now on the stock configuration. And this has very good slow flight capability. In the stock configuration, it has pretty light wing loading. So I don't think it's going to have any problems whatsoever at uh, 115 grams all up weight, even 120 grams all up weight. I think it's going to fly just fine. With this brushless power system, it's going to be a heck of a lot um, more powerful and you're going to be able to do a lot better aerobatics with this plane than in the stock configuration so I'm really I'm really looking forward to getting this done but first I wanted to talk about the components this brushless conversion module which is why I've held off on this project now that I've got everything set up and working I want to go ahead and demonstrate it on the bench so that you can see everything is working as it should before I start tearing into the airframe and pulling everything currently out of it and putting in the new components in it. So anyway, let me get set up here with the transmitter and then, uh, and then I'll show you. I'll, we'll go ahead and run this brushless motor up. See you in a minute. Okay, so before I demonstrate this, I wanted to put a close-up on the screen 
so that you can see how everything's patched together. Air, how everything is connected to, to create the system. Okay, so I went ahead and I, I plugged in another servo into the auxiliary port so that you can see that all four uh, all four channels are working on this. So, all right, let's see if any magic smoke comes out. Are you ready? No magic smoke. Okay, so there's the aileron servo. I don't know if you guys can see it from there. I've got it. Let me turn off the gyro mode so they're not constantly activating. Okay, so there's your aileron channel. There's the elevator channel. There's the rudder channel. And right now I should not have anything on the motor. I've got a piece of tape on here just so you can visually see that it's actually spinning up. I've got my safety switch on right now, so I'm not getting anything. Arm the motor. So, yeah. Isn't that awesome? Okay. All right, so I just wanted to demonstrate. Let me put my safety switch back on. Okay. So I wanted to demonstrate that everything on this is working as it should. And... And what surprised me the most was that I, I got it all working on the first go. And it doesn't usually happen. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. So anyway, this is the, take a look at this module because, like I said, these are pretty inexpensive bricks. And they come with a very rock solid gyro in them. And they have full manual mode as well. And with this module, you can, you can uh, use either a 1S or a 2S power system with a brushless motor. And that motor is spinning up just fine. Everything is working as it should. It's, it's a pretty inexpensive solution for being able to do a brushless conversion like that. So I am really happy about that. Because the brushless conversions I've had to do in the past... I basically had to replace everything except maybe the aileron servo. That was about the only thing I was able to keep because all these bricks have two of the servos mounted on the board. So I always had to replace the servos. I always had to replace the receiver board. I usually did not have a gyro in the receiver that I replaced it with. It was just a low voltage micro receiver. It had no gyro in it. So I didn't have a gyro as an option. And then I would also have to have... Uh, if I didn't have a receiver that had a built-in brushless ESC, I would have to provide an external ESC. So this, this makes it really a lot easier to do a brushless conversion, go, conversion going forward in the future with a protocol that's well supported in OpenTX, um, has a built-in gyro, has two receivers or, or two servos already on the board, an excellent gyro. You just add that module and an external ESC, and I'm going to be, I'm going to find my 6 amp ESC, so it's a little more compact, a little lighter weight. I don't know where it is, but I'll find it, and that's what I'm going to be putting in here. So I am hoping that within a week, weather permitting, I will have these electronics in this plane, everything configured and ready to go for a test flight. So stay tuned for that. There are links in the show notes for the sales page of this uh, brush to brushless module, a demo page. There's a link to RC Group's thread on the module, and I think uh, other items that they have available as well. So check them out. Let's, this is this module is provided to Ground Control RC. Courtesy of J. Bauer Electronics. All those links are, uh, except for the RC groups, are pointed directly to J. Bauer Electronics. I want to thank them again for sending me this module for testing and review. And now I'm going to be able to do brushless conversion of this mini P47. Should have plenty of power and plenty of flight time. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.
and I will see you in the air.